But first, a Gunkwood Playhouse is kicking off its 2018 season with a production of Smokey Joe's Cafe, a review featuring the biggest hits of the songwriting team of Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. The music of Lieber and Stoller is part of the American soundtrack. They've been introduced into both the Songwriters Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Their hits include Jailhouse Rock, Stand By Me on Broadway, of course, many more. Mike Stoller is still writing, still loves music, and he came to a gunquet to watch the first five performances of Smokey Joe's Cafe. We talked about how his musical journey began as a boy in New York City in the 30s and 40s before the invention of rock and roll. I, I got interested in music when I was about seven or eight when I heard somebody playing boogie boogie piano and it knocked me out. You and Jerry Lieber were both really young. You were what, 16, 17 years old when you started hanging out together and at the beginning you two just wrote I've read in an interview of yours, you wrote to amuse yourselves. Oh yeah, we did, but we hoped to get people to perform them. Lieber and Stoller got a break in 1952 when a singer named Little Willie Littlefield recorded their song, Kansas City. I'm gonna do Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Sales and airplay of Kansas City were minimal, but they kept writing, and a year later, in 1953, Big Mama Thornton released another Lieber and Stoller song, Hound Dog. You ain't nothing but a hound. That song sold half a million copies and went to number one on the rhythm and blues chart. Mike Stoller was 19 years old and he was on his way. You and Jerry Lieber are one of the great songwriting duos of all time. What was the process when you would get together to work? How did it how did it flow? Well, it changed through the years when, at the beginning, I would just start jamming at the piano and Jerry would shout out words, phrases, anything that came into his head. Uh, two, two words, three words. And if something sounded good with what I was doing, then we'd stop and then develop it from there. Having received a check for $5,000 for songwriting royalties, more money than he figured he'd ever see again in his life, Stoller went to Europe for four months and sailed back to the U.S. in 1956 on an ocean liner called the Andrea Doria. The Andrea Doria was believed to be unsinkable. Her tragedy is all the more pitiful for that. After colliding with another ship, the Andrea Doria sank off Massachusetts, the worst maritime disaster in U.S. waters in decades. Fortunately, eventually, I got off in a broken lifeboat and was picked up by a freighter. And uh, from the freighter, I sent a, a wire to Jerry Lieber. And when I came down the gangplank of the freighter, Jerry ran up to me and said, Mike, we got a smash hit. <laughs> the first almost, thing he said to me. You had almost lost your life. There were more than 40 people yes. who died in that yes. sinking. And he's excited, understandably, because you guys have a smash hit. So uh, I said, you're kidding. He said, no, hound dog. I said, Big Mama Thornton? He said, no, some white kid named El Elvis Presley. Well, I said you was high class. Elvis's version of Hound Dog went on to sell a staggering 10 million records. Rolling Stone magazine later ranked it number 19 of the 500 greatest songs of all time. You guys wrote for Elvis for a few years, not that long, because you got into some problems with his manager, the notorious Colonel Parker and so forth. But what was that relationship like? How did you get along with Elvis? Um, it was easy as could be, but he knew more about blues than we thought he would know. We thought we were the only white dudes who knew all about R&B and, and, and real blues. So we hit her off and it was very easy, you know, going back and forth. Remember the first song we mentioned, Kansas City? Wilbert Harrison did a cover version in 1959, seven years after Lieber and Stoller wrote it, and it was first recorded. Going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. 
Harrison's version shot to number one on the pop chart, became one of the biggest selling records of the year, and went on to be performed by the Beatles, James Brown, and dozens of other musicians. And its impact on Mike Stoller's life endures. Incidentally, um, I am going to Kansas City on June the 2nd, where Jerry Lieber and I are being inducted into the American Jazz Walk. When you go to Kansas City, are you going to be humming or singing, Kansas City, Here I Come? Is that song just going to be rattling around in your head? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I would imagine so. Funny story about Hound Dog, the Elvis version has some different lyrics. Those guys were not happy. Jerry and uh, Mike were not happy that Elvis had changed the lyrics. Oh. But then when the royalty checks started to flow in, in great volumes, because that song was a monster hit, they were okay with it. A little less angry about yeah. that. <laughs> Smokey Joe's Cafe, the music of Lieber and Stoller is being performed at a Gunkwood Playhouse. You can see it through June 9th.